We're here in the garage next to our 16 square foot uh, bottom heat propagation bed and today what I'd like to focus on is to talk about strategies to use bottom heat to help stimulate the rooting of actual root fragments and specifically we're going to talk about sea kale so for example we're going to start with a root and show how to get to a place where it's actually rooted with a shoot on top that happens with a good warm soil so we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about this is an extreme example but how to go from a root section of a dwarf sour cherry to a rooted plant now this didn't happen this year but this is what happened. So in case you're interested, this is a variety called Lutoka Rose, which is a beautiful, uh, self-fruitful, very cold hardy cherry that roots from root fragments. So we're gonna talk about that today, stick around. What I won't do in this video is go into great detail about the setup of this bed. If you're interested in seeing how we built this, I'm gonna link here as uh, well as the description and you can check that out very rough idea is this is an insulated uh, two foot by eight foot box held at roughly 74 degrees fahrenheit that's mixed with uh, that has a perlite and sand mix very amenable to rooting and we've shown in the past how this helps stimulate the roots of sea buckthorn and currants elderberries grapes and the like and the last round when we first took out currants uh, yasta berries and sea berries from here we immediately replace them with sections of root and so in this case this row has carmine jewel which is another variety of dwarf sour cherry these roots were put in um, on March 6th so we're basically one month later and what we have these are sections of root cut up from mother plants. Let me dip this in water so you can see what's going on. You can see this was a horizontal root running along in the ground and these are some shoots that were starting to form. These are new vegetative growth points and then these white rings are where the warmth has been stimulating callusing to develop more root hairs. And so this is well on its way to becoming a well-rooted plant it's still in a tender moment, but that heat below has helped dramatically in doing that. So let's take a look at some roots that we harvested and how we process them for this bottom heat. So the other day we were out at the main nursery and we went up to a pretty established carmine jewel dwarf sour cherry uh, and went in with a sharp nursery spade. I'll do a review of this sometime soon. This is the king of spades. You can sharpen it with a flat file. So I sharpen the tip of this. I'll link in the description to this tool. It's a pretty amazing tool if you're uh, thinking about being a small nursery. I've had this for six years. It hasn't rusted at all. Use it extensively. And so it makes very clean cuts around the base of plants. And so we took a tool, nursery spade, and dug down and pried up and so we've got these roots that came from that main plant. Now what I wouldn't encourage you to do is let's say you bought just one plant and it's just getting established. I would not go in and start digging around for roots, but this is a really complex garden. We needed to prune some other things and dig up some other plants around it anyway. Uh, and so it made sense. And knowing that this system works, it felt like it was worth the risk to harvest some roots this might translate into 100 or 200 more carmine jewel cherries, so very worth it. And what we did is tried to keep the orientation the same. You don't want to just dig them up and make a huge pile of craziness. You can see they're all oriented where these roots aim back originally to where the tree was. So this goes out into the garden. Hopefully that makes sense and you can probably even see that. And I'll explain why that is important in a moment. I'm going to put most of these aside, but I'll just take one root. I'm going to keep these in the shade, keep them cool. And I'll take this one root and I'm going to wipe it off in some water. You'll notice I'm not going crazy at all to try to be sterile and perfect and all that. This isn't, 
You can do that if that's what you want to do, brand new sterile pruners, but it doesn't feel necessary, so I don't do it. This is a good use for pruners that are a little bit more beat up, uh, since you are going to be cutting through roots that have been in the soil. And so what I do, this first piece might be a dud, it's pretty uh, ruined or, or wounded, but I'm going to keep it anyway, and we'll give it a shot. I will take cuttings that are around two to four inches long. You'll see I keep the orientation the same. So all of these are aiming back towards the plant. In other words, this way up, so to speak. Huh. When you lose that orientation, for whatever reason, I'll explain how you don't have to worry about it too much. Don't get too concerned. Once we get into these very fine root hairs, they don't root that readily, so we leave them alone. And so we've got a pile, all of these, in a condition where they're in warm soil, oriented up, so facing towards the tree, towards the shrub, should be able to start rooting and think about making a shoot. If I lost that orientation, I can lay them flat on their side and they'll figure it out. They'll make a new shoot and that's fine. So I can go through and prep all these, but I'm going to pause here and we'll show putting these into the bottom heat. So here we are back in the garage with that first little bundle. We've got a lot more to process and go through. Again, I'm keeping it with the orientation of facing upward is what went back towards the plant. But if I lost that for whatever reason, I could simply lay them flat and they'd figure themselves out. And what I'll do is find an open spot, because just yesterday I pulled out there were some uh, aronia that had rooted in here. And so now I've got this gap to work with. And I'm digging down till I get to the warm area at the bottom and I'm going to settle these in as a group. They don't have to be individually spaced out. They're basically here to stimulate callusing, rooting, and the start of shoots. And once there's any sort of green starting to form, it's time to pick them up and move them out to a nursery or pots or something like that. So it makes it easier and it makes it more conservative for the space to do them in groups. So we'll process the rest and go down the line and fill this all out. So those roots, pretty magically, this early in the season, with that warmth and in a pretty lean mix, this is a kind of a fast forward, so to speak. You can see here's one very clearly shooting. It doesn't have much of a root system yet. Their little hairs are just starting to form, but if this was carefully potted up or set out into a nursery bed and allowed to grow for a season, this might be a three to four foot tall really nicely established copy, photocopy, of a dwarf sour cherry, or of a black locust, or of an aronia, or perhaps even a hazelnut. Uh, and you can see in here all these little green shoots. So this is telling me that this round of cuttings that we took last month really needs sooner than later to be moved on. Here's one where I lost the orientation, so I just laid it on its side. And you can see it figured itself out just fine. New shoots and some roots forming. Very strange but pretty amazing phenomenon that that happens. And in fact, I could probably snip that little piece off and have two cuttings from this one piece. So we'll go through and continue that with this whole process, this group of carmine jewel roots. We'll wash off the roots a little bit, trim them, and then set them in either on their side or facing up in the direction that they were. And again, in that last shot, you saw that there were roots next to those little green shoots. These are the existing roots that the new green shoots that are callusing and forming will use to get started, and they'll develop their own fresh roots later on. So if you don't see rooting right away, don't worry. If you have failure with it the first time you try this, don't worry, try it again next year. Um, the other critical thing I want to mention is that, and I mention this all the time when I show that propagation bed, you don't have to build a big propagation bed to work with this. You can use a small $20 heat mat. I'll put a link in the description for those. You can find those used online or so. And you could use any sort of container. Maybe it's a five gallon bucket cut. You see drainage. And so even a tray like this filled with a light uh, soil mix or perlite and sand, you could do a hundred root cuttings on one little uh, heat mat 
or maybe it goes in a warm window sill if you don't want to have to plug anything in or if you're off grid. So try this with what you've got. It's about a lightweight soil mix, even but not heavy moisture, and root sections for a little while, and you get copies of your plants. Let's take a look at sea kale. This is a pretty amazing plant. Sea kale is a, a perennial brassica family. Look at these crazy leaves. Very, very fat, strong roots, and just kind of like a horseradish, any section of root. In fact, if you've ordered sea kale rootlets from us, you may have gotten something like this. Uh, this laid on its side, or again, oriented with what faces the parent facing up. With uh, the right soil conditions will form roots and a new shoot. Now you can definitely, in the early to mid spring, if you've got good warm soil, simply put this in a garden bed and have a pretty good success rate. But if you wanted to increase that, applying that bottom heat in a lightweight soil mix would give you a much higher rate of success. So again, these can be laid on their side or stood up on a system like what I've made or in a tray with soil, a light soil with a heat mat underneath or in a warm window or on top of your fridge. And these sorts of shoots, these roots, become this, which is a nice rooted and established cutting. And what's amazing to see is even the tiniest little root fragments, that's way skinnier than a pencil, and that put on roots and also is starting to shoot. That'll be a well-developed plant by fall. This little section has about 150 or so of these, and they're all starting to push. They're all starting to leaf out, so we'll move them out to the garden soon enough. That was done about a month ago. These systems are not that complex, and work with what you've got. Maybe it's a warm windowsill. Maybe it's a $20 heat mat. Maybe it's a $100 system like this. But either way, give it a shot. Take some root cuttings of plants that seem like they might be amenable to that sort of propagation this spring. Let us know how they work for you. If you have failures, give it a shot again next year. We have lots of things that go awry many, many times. We just keep repeating until things seem to work out. Thanks so much for watching.